I'm Ben Novak, lead scientist for Revive and Restore, and this is the science behind our Biotechnology for Bird Conservation program's mission to advance avian reproductive technologies for genetic rescue. A number of reproductive technologies have been used for conservation, from artificial insemination to in vitro fertilization, and recently cloning. Cloning in particular is a critical technology for 21st century genetic rescue techniques. In 2020, Revive and Restore, in partnership with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Viagen Pets and Equine, and San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance, cloned an endangered black-footed ferret from cells that had been cryopreserved for 32 years. The cloned ferret, named Elizabeth Ann, will bring lost genetic diversity back into the small gene pool of her bottlenecked species. There happen to be cells cryopreserved for hundreds of types of birds as well, and many people have asked, can we clone birds? The short answer is no. To understand why, let's take a look at how cloning is done for mammals. Scientists can take somatic cells, like a skin cell, from either an adult or embryonic mammal, like this mouse, and use these as the DNA donors for cloning. Any clone produced from these cells will be a genetic twin to their original donors. Separately, the DNA of an egg cell from the same or a closely related species is removed by extracting the nucleus. With a complete set of DNA, the egg cell's fertilization mechanisms are triggered, forming an embryo. This embryo is grown in vitro to the blastocyst stage when it is implanted into the uterus of a surrogate mother, who carries it to term and gives birth to a baby clone. Now let's consider birds. Scientists can certainly obtain donor cells from adults or embryos, but the egg cell poses a challenge. To manipulate an egg cell, scientists need to be able to locate its DNA and extract it under a microscope. This isn't so difficult with the microscopic translucent egg cells of mammals, but the nucleus of a bird's egg cell happens to be floating in the opaque yellow cytoplasm of the world's largest cell, an egg yolk. The entire process of egg fertilization and formation in birds provides almost no points of easy access for manipulation, making cloning, as well as in vitro fertilization, infeasible. However, in the 1990s, researchers working on domestic chickens found a different way to create birds from cell donors, known as germline transmission. The process works like this. Stem cells known as primordial germ cells are isolated from a developing embryo. These will become sperm or eggs in adult birds. They can be isolated at several points in early embryonic development and then cultured in a petri dish. These cultured cells can be transplanted into a surrogate parent at an early embryonic stage by opening up a small window into the eggshell and injecting cells directly into the bloodstream, where they circulate to the developing testes or ovaries. The eggshell is then sealed and the bird is incubated to hatching. This bird is now a germline chimera, a surrogate parent that carries donor germ cells in its reproductive system. When it reaches sexual maturity, a male chimera produces donor sperm and a female chimera produces donor eggs, and when bred, give rise to double donor offspring. It's an incredible technology, but it is yet to be advanced to the same level of versatility as cloning. Since frogs were first cloned in 1957, a total of 55 kinds of amphibians, fish, and mammals, and one insect, have been cloned. Until 1996, scientists had only been able to clone mammals using embryonic cells, but that all changed with the birth of Dolly the sheep, the first animal cloned from an adult donor. Since then, a number of species have been cloned from adult cells, the breakthrough that makes cloning useful for conservation. Germline transmission with cultured cells was innovated around the same time that Dolly the sheep was born, but to date, the complete process of producing double donor offspring has only been achieved in the chicken, and only from embryonic donor cells. The main barrier to translating germline transmission to other species is the culture step. The growth factors that work for chicken fail to keep other species' cells alive. Our first goal to make germline transmission useful to conservation is to develop the right culture conditions to grow primordial germ cells from wild species. Once successful, conservationists could use a common, non-threatened species as a surrogate parent to give birth to endangered offspring. Conservationists will be able to freeze cells for later genetic rescue, or use them immediately to help rapidly recover dwindling populations. But embryos of endangered species are a rare commodity. While the benefit of sacrificing a few embryos may outweigh the cost in dire situations, there is a need to be able to work with donor cells from adult birds. This is the second mission of our program, to innovate the ability to take cells from a plucked feather and reprogram these cells into primordial germ cells. 
This innovation will unlock the true potential and versatility of germline transmission for conservation, much like Dolly the sheep did for cloning. We may even be able to take this one step further and use modified chickens as universal surrogate parents for many endangered species, increasing the potential to produce large numbers of endangered offspring. A diversity of germline transmission pathways opens up many opportunities for genetic rescue biotechnologies, from restoring genetic diversity from the past for bottleneck species, like the Guam kingfisher, or rapidly expanding numbers for reintroductions of the rarest birds, like the Spix's macaw, or even using gene editing to help species, such as providing genes for disease resistance in Hawaiian honeycreepers, or correcting a lethal genetic disorder that affects the California condor. These are just a few examples of the types of things that will be possible with the right breakthroughs in biotechnology for bird conservation. Our goal is to make genetic rescue possible for all of the world's birds. With the right innovations in biotechnology, we can.